All right, what I'll be doing here is taking this script, which we have all the inputs and outputs here, but we want to turn this into a cluster. So what I'll do is I'll select all the relevant sliders. And at the end, when I create a script, I like to organize it and label all this, the sliders. But once we have them labeled, I create, I save this as a different file. That way I can keep the original script. And that's something critical because sometimes, let's say if you're working on a different iteration, sometimes that is, um, that's something that happens. You can override your information and then having to go back could be a little bit tricky. So I'm just picking the sliders because those are the inputs. And then the ones where let's say we have an MD slider, like I'll keep that one here. This is a index of five, which I can internalize the data here, or I can keep the slider here. So that's some of the things that we do. If you internalize the data, it will keep that number in the index and you can delete this. Same with this. If this is this number, we can internalize data and it will remove the input. Now we can delete this. So this is going to be a scale. I did not label this. So scale box. Here's the thing. This one is actually one that we also want to keep in here. But we can increase this to two so that way we make sure that it doesn't intersect or that it intersects with the form so now let's go here and internalize data and then do that again with this one we can actually delete that component the reason we want to do this is we don't want to organize the inputs on the left hand side if it's a slider that doesn't change so we can keep the design consistent so let's select the sliders again holding down shift i'm picking all of these and i like to group them to give them a little bit of a different color so i know exactly where the sliders are and make sure you pick all the sliders because sometimes some kind of sneak through and you need all of those okay now what i do is once they're selected i'll go to this arrow on the left which means align to the left and then i'll slide them over here once I have them here, I like to use this evenly space them. And now we're going to organize this in a logical way, right? So if we have size one, size two, size three, vertical array, form array, fillet can go here or it could go here. The structure height. That's an important one. So what I like to do is the critical ones, the ones that make the biggest impact in terms of changing the numbers go at the top and at the bottom, you have the other sliders that obviously change the design as well, but they are not as relevant. So let's say divisions three, there's division one. Oh, okay. So this is actually up here. This is going to be here. If you hold down shift, you can keep them organized like this. Now, if they overlap, we're going to reorganize these again. Rotate multiplication. This is one frame depth, frame size, frame offset, floor height. Actually, this would go towards the top. And then floor rebuild could be, well, what it does is it rebuilds that bottom curve to be like that. The larger the number, the closer you get to the original. Now with this, we're going to select all the inside portion, middle click, and then disable preview. All right, now at this point, we need to make sure that the inputs are organized. Now, what happens is let's say this 100, or let's say this form array will go all the way down here, but you see how many inputs 
come out of this one. So what we need to do is create a relay. So I'll double click on the output of every slider. And this redoes the number, so it sometimes takes a little bit to refresh. Okay, so let's double click here. And we'll do that for all of them. Now let's finish these off. All right. Now we'll select from left to right. So we only select the relays. I'll go to the right and then middle to organize them. Same with this to the left and then center organized. And this keeps them pretty organized. But here's a thing that I don't like is I don't like the sliders to be a different size and it's obviously just a style thing but for me I'll ungroup these and then go to the longest one and put it on one of the grid lines now those grid lines are just a reference for you to extend these up to that line and then we will have a really clean and organized set of sliders that just cleans it up I mean this is not necessarily under the category of parametric designing but Keeping your stuff organized is always a critical thing, especially when you want to come back and organize things or or reuse it, or if you want other people to use it, they'll really appreciate a script that has your inputs and outputs organized like this. All right, so we have the inputs. Now, outputs, same thing. Relay, 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 relay. Move this to the right, move this to the right, evenly space both of them. And now we need to also organize this depending on the critic or how they're organized. So that's going to be the frame. Let's see, this part's going to be the glass. Frame. Those two are the same. Then we have here the glass form or the outside form. And then with this one, let's see if this one's good, it's going to be the floor. So we have three different outputs. And let's evenly space them here again. So to the right, and then this one to evenly space them, to the right, and then evenly space them. Now these have the wire display as hidden, which is fine. Uh, we just want to now, now that we have everything organized, we'll select all of this and what happens. Okay, this is something that I got asked. How do you make, how do you label the names? You can label the relay here with the same name as this. But what happens is if you don't have a relay, you'll get the name of whatever the input is for the component. The reason I like to use relay is because it actually makes it blank and you don't have to relabel things. You just have to label them. So with that, let's take all of this middle click cluster. And now we have all the inputs and outputs organized into this small component that is basically the entire script in here. We just have the inputs and the three outputs, which we are going to move over here. Notice that they're not labeled. Now, if you don't have a relay, you will have a label there. So how do we change the names? I like to right click. Control A, Control C to copy this. And then we're just going to right click right at the input. Now, if you right click here, that's not the correct spot. Or you could go in here and relabel them here like this, or just right click, paste. Uh, right click, Control A, Control C, right click, Control V. 
So I'll be doing that for all of these. Control A, Control C, and then Control V. And at the end here, now we have all of them labeled. Now on this side, now we have them previewed and we're going to select this. These are going to be vertical array. This one's going to be outside skin. And then this will be the ground plane, floor, plate. So we've now organized these, and we can do the same thing with these. This is going to be deleted. Same with these. This will go to the middle of that. Now I do hidden wire display so it doesn't get in the way with here with all of this stuff. But this, let's organize this again. This, I like to place it back here just as a additional to. We don't have to preview it if you don't want to, or you don't have to preview this if you don't want to. So now that we have a cluster, we have the inputs and outputs organized here. We need to change the label. Now, when we go here, right click, go to properties. And this is where I like to label this. So this one is called toroidal and I label them by the date. So two, four, zero, one, two, toroidal. Array twist. And then one, because if I do a different one, then that'll be two. So I'll do control A, control C to copy that and then change this. And then the author, I like to do my website. Copy this. And I just use my website as all the inputs here. So whoever uses this can use the website to reference back to where the original was downloaded. Now we're going to change the icon. Here's the thing. You can show the different icons that you can change this to. Like you can change them by color here. But if you have a small PNG, you can browse for icon files. And I have my on my website here, I have the so let's see if it shows it here. I have my script store. And in here I have an icon, which it's nothing more than let's see if we can do that again. I'll right click and open it so you can see it. It's nothing more than just a simple simplified icon that's a PNG without a background and then I use that hit OK and now it changes the icon so you can make it specific like I can create a toroidal shape here um, or you can create a generic one it's up to you depending on how you're trying to use these so let's organize these these are too spaced out so I move them and even overlap them but I don't go past it now that we have these, we can easily space them out evenly. Same with, let's say it's still too much. And that's what I do with my script. So with this video, I wanted to share with you guys, once you have a script all done, if you want to go further and organize it and clean it up so you can share it with people or just so you can create your own library, this is um, a great tutorial for that. So if you know anyone that can learn from this, or if you want to learn other parametric tricks, I have many tutorials going over different exercises. Hopefully you found this one useful. 
this is actually a very critical one if you use grasshopper a lot so thank you very much for being here i hope you enjoyed it and i hope to see you on the next one